With the new Studio Series Hot Rod almost here for the public, I figured taking a look at the DX9 one would be cool, seeing as how I'm very excited for the new Studio Series toy. So in the last night, you can tell they wanted Hot Rod to go somewhere character-wise. The way he's animated in the film and the stuff he does, along with how prominent he was featured once introduced, it was unlike a lot of the other Autobots they introduced in the films. They gave Hot Rod a bit of a backstory too, and that's why I like this version so much, which is why I ultimately went for this figure. I'm starting in car mode because this video structure, but it's such a beautiful car mode. Lambos are some of my favorite cars out there, and they absolutely nailed the look of the Centenario. Now, if someone could take Stinger and get an MPM version of that, that would be great, seeing as the Huayra is my favorite car literally ever. I'm extremely impressed with the back end, how they were able to get all that axe styling detail on the rear of the car, and how the panel lines flow with the car. The way things are cut on this just feels very intentional to keep the alt mode from looking too unnecessarily panel lined, which was my main complaint in the last video. They even gave it a friggin' DRS wing, which is just epic. And the tires are rubber, but they are a bit thin, which looks a bit meh from certain angles. You do get a Vivian and she looks like a throw-in figure. Not the best, but hey, extra stuff, I, I guess. She doesn't artificially inflate the price at all, which is nice. She can't really sit in the car super well, but there are dedicated seats, so that's nice. Love how the doors actually scissor open and you can rotate them a little bit like the actual car. That's cool. Oh, and I should also mention that this is a knockoff of DX9 La Hire, not the actual one. At the time when I got this, I couldn't find the real one and this was like 40 bucks, so I went for it. And for a knockoff, there's only one major issue that I'll get into later. There isn't a lot of color on display here, but that orange stripe going around the car just looks really clean, even for a knockoff from a third-party toy. And the tinted windows, thank you. I, I hate completely clear windows. I don't know why they keep using them, because you just see everything inside the car. And as a hyper car like this, most of them would have tinted windows anyways, so they did it here, and it looks superb it's a very nice size a lot better in my opinion than peru kill like the proportions and everything still not the biggest fan of that figure but it fits really well with other mpm toys in car mode now my knowledge of cars is pretty small coming from pretty much watching top gear a lot and that's really it my dad though is a car nut and this is to him the best alt mode of any of the toys i've had so far here's well here's just here's what he thinks about it hi ruby can't do it. Ah, Ruby. Ruby's being a nuisance. So I'm gonna hand you a bunch of random cars first okay. to look at, and then we'll look at Hot Rod. So here's this one. What do you think of that? Having seen this in real life, because we saw this in real life. Yes, we did. Uh, I mean, it's close to real life, but the, the I mean, the gaps are horrendous. It's okay. It doesn't it doesn't move me. You know what I'm saying? All right, what about this? Bigger. Bigger? Bigger car. Well, it's obviously a knockoff, right? Yeah, so you know it's not it's not it's an not, it's actual It's an Audi R8. front end, and a, well, not really an Audi back end, but still, it's got, it's a bit of an R8 thing. I don't know. I don't really don't like it too much. Yeah. All right, MPM Jazz. So, I remember when we saw this in the movie, and you really wanted one in real life, yes. right? Uh, a real car, not the toy. Uh, this looks pretty good, except for the fact when you look on the inside, it looks absolutely terrible because there's way too much stuff in there. And the gaps are just huge. I mean, don't, the doors even work? No. no. doesn't work. So it's not, nothing fantastic. Now, La Hire. Hot Rod, right? Yes. Now this one, you know, like this, <laughs> okay. This is a great looking car in real life. We've seen one. You have? Yeah, we saw the auto show one. I think. Did we? Yeah, we should have. Oh. We saw, we saw one. I like the fact that it looks so close to the real car. It's incredible. And underneath, it doesn't look as you know bulky and all that stuff. It's not overly weight, a heavy weight. The rear wing does work kind of thing. And you show me the doors are working. I would say it's probably one of the best looking uh, cars that uh, that's uh, that Hasbro made, I think. Well, Hasbro has not made that one. Well, there you go. Okay. Yes. That's a third party. That's not, ha this, this is Hasbro. It explains a lot, doesn't the it? <laughs> But this looks really good. I, I do like it. Uh, now you can buy me one of these in real life. Plus you have? Do you have six million dollars and it's access? Not, and access million. after taxes and everything? No, it's not six and million. And access to an extremely rare. They only made a few of those. Most of which were made for the movie. Well, no, they, they did make a, a handful of them. They were already sold before they were made, so they're not available for sale. Yeah. So good luck. Yeah. So yeah, the car mode is one of the best alt modes I've seen on a Transformer going for realism. That just hands down. The whole robot just compacts super well and it's so nice, It like a neat little package. It's awesome. It doesn't compromise any part of the alt mode. It's not missing side view mirrors. It doesn't have weird proportions. It just feels 
clean. Now let's transform it. It does some pretty unexpected things to become a robot. So let's go through it together so I can show you those. So what? I've already forgotten what I was going to say. So La Hire or Hot Rod has a very interesting transformation. It The way that everything sort of works up here is extremely interesting. And then the way this entire back section works is also extremely interesting because if you take a figure like this, right? MPM Jazz here, uh, the back end is, it's not boring, but it's not the most out there type of transformation. The front is, but it constantly collides with itself. I can't see my own screen. Constantly collides with itself and it's really hard to actually get everything done properly. I find myself having to rip him in half a lot to get everything transformed. Not exactly the most fun thing in the world and MPM Bumblebee was just two halves on a stick. So that also wasn't super intriguing or interesting. This on the other hand, does it really, really well. So the first thing you'd wanna do is you wanna get the doors open. Ah, probably the most difficult part of the transformation is getting the stupid doors open. Eh. Come on, come on, slide up, there we go. So once you get those up and out of the way, you can then start working on the arms, which is what I do first. Just because I like to get, they're easy, the easiest thing to do, so you just get them out of the way. I do like Unique Toys slash DX9's inclusion of using stuff like this, clips, to hold things in place. They do this on Nero to keep the torso together, and it just works. It, I don't know, it just works really well. You unpeg this and then you can slide this section down, right? I'm getting further away from the camera. Slide that down. And then just bring all this out, fold that down, rotate the doors to the back, rotate this section, and then you just clip it all into place. There's a nice order of operations to how all that works. There, once that's clipped in, you just slide these together, shift the head back and then you fold this section in and collapse the arms to create, well, the arms. And it's so simple, yet it's so effective on how they get the wheels to be in the correct spot. I just, I like that, and boom. That's the upper body, pretty much, pretty much done right there. And that wasn't really hard. Now, when you compact everything up here together, that, so, okay, this, this requires a little bit of explaining. MPM Bumblebee does something very similar to the Studio Series toys were on how his back works. Probably the older Studio Series, not the newer ones. But in any case, it has the, the roof fold into inside the back. But when it does that, it sticks out quite a bit still. The way that this works, because this roof panel here slides, you can very easily just get this and hook this around to hold that in place. And then this folds over and pegs in like that. And not only do you have the back panel there now, you have the entire torso all cleaned up. You just fold these bits into here and boom, that's it. That's really clever the way that it cleans all that up. I really like that. And then you can just fold these back here and keep those down on his back. And now this is what I like to call Beast Machine's Rat Trap mode. He's just got two wheels that you can Beast Machine Rat Trap. Okay, I'm sorry. And then the legs, this is where it gets extremely interesting. You unpeg these sections, right? And you just sort of, what's it stuck on? Oh yeah, untab the top part here and then bring the leg out. You then bring this forward, rotate this section, unfold it, and then sort of wrap it around to fill in all the gaps. Everything is intentionally done to fill in all the gaps there. And then this piece becomes his heel and pegs in. And I love this part. These bits don't just, go wherever, they actually become bits of detail on the robot, accurate pieces of detail on the legs. And that's just so cool. I, I quite like that, I think that's really neat. This robot is just perfection, almost. The chest plates don't lock in at all and they're super loose on my copy, so that's really annoying, but hey, KO, okay, what do you expect, right? The only design gripe I have is that the torso seems a tad too long, but other than that, it looks spot on to what we got in the film. The entire roof of the car just vanishes into the robot, tucked away nice and neatly, leaving such a clean silhouette, it's incredible. 
there is a lot more orange and silver on display here and the silver paint matches the unpainted diecast very well to the point where the diecast doesn't look out of place being unpainted it just works massive props to making this thing look so proportionate and still getting the wheels in the correct places this is why they're thin in the alt mode because they have if they were thicker they would look really out of place the torso also has this layered detailing in it unlike challenger and peru kill where they just use flat panels with greebles on them so this makes the details pop a lot more here love the way the door wings get done in the transformation and how they end up folding so perfectly back there i was a huge fan of the reverse door wings in the film and the original deluxe didn't really have that at all fortunately it's been done here very well and i know that the new studio series deluxe they showed us is going to be able to do that too so that's exciting one thing that stood out to me the most in the transformation from car to robot was how the back of the car folds up and becomes the hip panels i like how the car is actually being used to make parts of the robot as opposed to either being tucked away or unnecessarily hanging off of it. Like the roof becomes the structure of the torso, the legs are entirely made up of car bits, the arms kind of do come out of nowhere, but they have enough foldy bits of the car to make it feel the same as the rest of the robot. In a lot of other MPM toys, the limbs kind of just appear out of places and the alt mode just gets tucked away, but this is the opposite here. The car is actively being used to detail the robot and it's very clever. So the stuff you get with him, you, you get quite a bit. He comes with his second handgun that he actually does have in the film in like one shot or something, surprise. An ammo clip, which has gone missing. A Vivian, who you saw already. A blast effect, which I'll show a little later. A sticker set that is so bad I'm not using it. And his stop the time gun. It's such a goofy hot rod thing and I love it. You can take the stop the time ring off and put it on the other gun. Their sculpts are identical. And yeah, you only get one ammo clip, but this... I mean, the stop the time gun doesn't really have that in the film. The other gun does. So yeah, that's what I give it to if I hadn't lost it. Now his articulation is really, really good. He has so much for his size that I can't just speed it up and talk over it. You have to see what this is. So the head only swivels. I really wish the head was on a ball joint, but due to the way that it transforms, it can only really swivel. He can look up and down due to the transformation hinges. And you can, you can do that, which is kind of funny i don't know it makes him kind of look like a paraka with his neck sticking straight forward anyways getting that back up uh you get rotation at the shoulder he has trigger happy shoulders which is kind of annoying but and eh, you can work around it he does have bicep rotation you get double jointed elbows which is nice on his massive mitts because his hands are a little out of proportion the thumbs on a ball joint with the finger with the finger with the top of the thumb on a hinge and then it's got the three finger trigger finger split so yeah oh and a wrist swivel and they can tilt inwards if that interests you at all you get a waist joint which is really nice and if you unclip this silver piece back here you get an ab crunch so and you can go all the way that far forward so that's quite nice hips are a tiny bit limited because of the way the sculpt is i'm surprised this isn't like a hip skirt it's just a solid piece it's pinned in but it doesn't move <laughs> at all so they only go forward about that far Unless you rotate them, then you can get them a little further out. Uh, but straight forward, they only go that far, which is a little annoying. Uh, they go back quite a bit and they go out quite a bit, even with the sculpt here. And if you want, you can move the sculpt out of the way to get the legs even further out. He has a bi bicep, a thigh swivel, and a knee swivel. So if you need to move it, the leg forward like this, you can always just rotate it like that if you want the foot to be straight. I like that. Uh, you get a die cast knee hinge that bends about that far, over 90 degrees. Then you get ankle tilts that are ridiculous. But that's that's really all you get. And normally I like both forward and back and ankle tilts. So that would have been a bit of a bummer. However, he does have a toe joint that flicks forward ever so slightly. But you get quite a bit of an angle on that. And you can fold the heel spur down to get even more of an angle on it to help you get some balance in those poses. So he does accommodate for forward and backwards because he doesn't actually have that joint. I like that. Yeah, this is my favorite MPM style toy to mess with. Sure, Nero looks better and MPM 12 is easier to transform, but this just strikes a balance between the two goals that it makes it perfect. Obviously the knockoff problems exist, but if it wasn't a knockoff, then I would have absolutely zero issues with it. I definitely recommend this to anyone with an MPM collection and if you don't mind third party, I'll link it below if I can find it in stock at all. Or if you just want a cool and interesting hot rod, then also get this because it's a great pickup. So that's been my look at DX9 Lahire. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.